Okay, you guys, I'm very excited to share these salted fudgy brownies with you. They are made with 100% rye flour, but they are moist, they're delicious, and no one is ever going to know that they're made with 100% whole grain flour. Now to start these, what you do is you're going to chop up your chocolate. I always use a baking bar. This is Ghirardelli. It's bittersweet. I love that deep, dark chocolate. If you don't want it to be as dark, you can always use semi-sweet, but I definitely don't recommend milk sweet. This recipe has enough sugar in it, and I just feel like milk chocolate has too much sugar already. So chop it up into about one half inch chunks and then you're going to add this to your butter in a microwave safe bowl that's really important we're going to microwave this for about 30 seconds depending on, on your microwave you might have to go a little bit longer but this is what it looks like once it comes out you can see that there's very small chunks in it mix it for about 10 or 20 seconds and those lumps will continue to melt then you're going to set this aside and we're going to start on the brownies. Now one key to getting that signature crinkle on the top is that you're going to want to mix together your eggs to begin with. I usually do this for three to four minutes. They're going to get kind of frothy and nice and then once they're all mixed together we're going to add in our sugars. Now I use a mix of brown sugar and white sugar. And then again, kind of the same process, we're going to mix this for about two to three minutes. Once this is finished, then we're going to add in that melted chocolate that you set aside. It should already be cooled at this point or cooled enough that it won't affect the batter as much. You're going to pour that in with your vanilla. Of course, don't forget your vanilla. And then at this point, you can continue to mix with your beaters, but you don't have to. You can also just mix with a spoon or a spatula, whatever you want to do. Uh, it doesn't need to be beaten really well like you did with the eggs and the sugar. I just kept using it because I was already using them. This is going to come together very quickly. You don't want to mix this for more than maybe 10 seconds or so. And then after this, we're going to add in our dry ingredients. I already mixed these together, but this is 100% rye flour, as I mentioned. It's the cocoa powder. It's a tiny bit of leavening. I typically don't use it unless I'm making whole grain brownies, and then I think they need just a little bit of help. It's also got a little bit of salt in it. We're going to add more salt on the top, but you definitely need it in your batter as well. Now, once this is mixed together really well, you can see everything has come together. I also like to uh, use a rubber spatula and scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl just to make sure that everything is mixed in really well. After it's all mixed in, you know everything's good, we're going to pour this into a parchment lined baking sheet. Now I know a lot of people probably don't want to waste the parchment paper or don't want to pay for the extra cost, but I promise that it is so much easier, not only for cleanup of course, but also for removing the baked brownies from the pan. It just makes it so much simpler. I top mine with a flake salt. You can also use any other type of coarse salt that you like. Now some um, salted brownie recipes that I see, there is a lot of salt. Now I like salt myself, but I actually don't like a ton of it on my brownies. If you want to put a little bit more on, you can, but I think this amount is plenty. Move this to your oven and being very careful not to overbake or you won't wind up with fudgy brownies. This is what it looks like as soon as it comes out. It's a little puffy, but of course as it starts to cool, you'll notice that it falls. But one really important um, tip for getting fudgy brownies is not to overbake. These are only baked for 43 to 45 minutes. Do not overdo it or they're going to dry out and they're going to be more like cake. Let them cool for just a little bit or you can eat them hot, but if you want to slice them like I do, they'll need to cool for at least about an hour and then they're done. 